Hi, I'm Kate, and it's Midwest Nice Out. I live here, and our winters look and feel like this. This video is for people who can't quite get warm enough to want to go outside in the winter. Today, we're going to be talking about base layers, but if you need a refresher on layering, you can check out my previous video. My guess is that if you can't get warm enough, the culprit is cotton. The unofficial American uniform is cotton. The t-shirt, that's cotton. Denim, that's cotton. Canvas shoes and white socks, those are all cotton. I'm willing to bet that it makes up the majority of your wardrobe. But cotton, which we embrace for its next-to-skin comfort, was originally used for cooling. It grows in warm places, and the people who lived there used it for clothes because it kept them cool. Hot culture. Cold culture. Hot culture. Cold culture. Hot culture. Cotton is terrible in the cold and wet. Cotton saturates easily and the fiber collapses when it's wet, meaning that it's going to stick to you. And once it starts sticking to you, less airflow can get between your skin and the fabric, which not only slows down drying time, but it also keeps water in contact with your heat source, which is your body, causing more rapid conductive heat loss. Simply put, being wet causes you to lose heat faster. And it doesn't have to be a head to toe soaking. It could equally be from sweat. People underestimate how much they sweat, especially in the cold. It's very easy to dehydrate in the winter. So cotton in the winter will cause you to lose heat. So don't make cotton your first layer in the cold. Instead of cotton, I want you to try out a material capable of wicking sweat away from your skin, like merino wool or polyester base layers. Because their primary function is sweat wicking, they're often marketed as outdoor gear for active people. But they're not just for active outdoorsy people, they're also for indoorsy sedentary people who can't get warm. They're for everyone who's trying to make it through months of deep cold. I wear base layers every day when the temperature drops below 50 degrees. For my temperature zone, that's October to March. Even on days when I'm not planning to leave my house and I'm just working at my desk, I wear base layers under my clothes. That's how important they are. This brings me to another important point. Base layers are for going under your clothes. I've seen people often make the mistake of treating them the same as sweats. They're not meant to keep you warm on their own, really. They're meant for keeping you dry. Remember, it's a three layer system and each layer has a different job. A quick note on fit, base layers should be close fitting without being constrictive. You don't wanna cut off blood flow, but it should be tight enough to be touching your skin everywhere so it can wick away sweat. If you're a person who usually prefers a baggier fit, ignore that for your base layers and make up for it in your mid layers. So let's start by talking about base layers made out of merino wool. That's my preferred fabric for base layers. Merino wool works well for sedentary indoorsy people who can't stay warm because it can do a little bit of insulating. It also does a great job of managing heat and moisture for people who are doing start and stop activities like winter dog walks when your dog insists on stopping to smell everything. And I know maybe some of you switched off when you heard the word wool. Maybe you've even been avoiding wool since you remember your holiday sweaters of your youth being hot and itchy. But the kind of wool that you're remembering is from a different type of sheep. Wool is a catch-all term for fiber from different animals. Each of these animals produces wool of different lengths, fiber diameter, crimp, density, and colors. And to me, merino wool is just about as comfortable as cotton. Merino sheep grow a very fine diameter wool fiber, measuring in at about 12 to 22 microns, compared to cotton, 12 to 22 microns. By the way, the lower the micron size, the less itchy the fabric. Merino wool garments are knit quite tightly and finish with flat lock seams, meaning there's no overlap, so it won't chafe the skin. Merino wool fibers are zigzag crimped, which creates tiny pockets of air that trap heat and insulate the body. And unlike cotton, the fibers don't collapse when wet. So while it's never fun to be wet and cold, wool is really the ideal material to be wet in in the cold because it will still allow you to retain some body heat. This is why traditional professions that worked around water wore wool. This explains the fisherman's sweater and also the watch cap, both made out of wool. And I know some people worry that wool is gonna to be too warm. I definitely understand the concern, especially because people living in different places have different meanings of the word winter. But the good news is that base layers come in different weights for different temperatures. Most merino wool base layer makers produce at least three different weights, 
lightweight, midweight, and heavyweight. Some brands break their weights down even further. So which do you need? I made this nice little chart. It takes into account not only how warm it is outside, but also how warm you already are, AKA how much activity you're doing. So you can decide the right weight for your lifestyle and climate. The weight of a base layer is measured in grams per square meter, literally how much a meter of the fabric weighs, which reflects the fabric's thickness or density. But again, keep in mind, the job of the base layer is to wick sweat. Thicker fabrics will take longer to wick that sweat away from your skin into the upper layers. So thicker or more dense isn't always better, even if it's cold. Let's talk about lightweight first, usually around 150 grams per square meter, which is about the same thickness as a cotton undershirt. It's ideal for temperatures 60 degrees Fahrenheit plus. It's the right weight for people who are going to be outside for a long time and might get sweaty or rained on. It often gets used by campers, hikers, outdoor runners, rock climbers, and other active outdoorsy people. But I also own a few of these lightweight layers and I tend to wear them in the fall and spring. The next weight up is for cold weather, midweight, middleweight, or medium weight. It's usually around 200 grams per square meter. If you only buy one of these to get you through winter, I'd recommend starting at this weight since you can always compensate either way by adding more layers or fewer and thicker layers or thinner over top of your base layer to adjust how warm you'll be. The next layer up, is heavyweight base layers, sometimes called expedition weight. These are for the deep cold, are usually 250 grams per square meter or more. The garments are often thick in some areas and thinner or more porous in other areas to prevent overheating by encouraging sweat wicking and evaporation. I've seen merino wool garments go up to 400 grams per square meter, but when the merino wool gets that thick, it's definitely meant for freezing cold, sub-zero temperatures, and might actually be considered a mid-layer, meant to be worn over a lighter base layer. It used to be common practice to add the weight of the garment right in the name, so the product would be called 350 Base Layer. But lately, there's been a lot of renaming for marketing purposes, which can be confusing for newcomers. You can't really rely on the item's name, and you also kind of can't rely on the item's description. Look at this, we already established that winter is different everywhere, but so are the temperatures that each person considers cold. Winter and cold are kind of subjective. So if you look in the technical specifications for the grams per square meter, you'll be able to see whether it's light, about 150-ish, medium, 200-ish, and heavyweight, 250-ish to 400-ish. So no need to worry about overheating. You can tailor the thickness of the garment to the temperatures that you're facing that day and what you're gonna be doing. Let's look at my favorite base layer maker, Smartwool. This video isn't sponsored, by the way. I've had some of their base layers for years, and like I said, I wear them every day, fall to spring, and they look just as good as when I bought them. I love Smart Wool because they're transparent about their animal ethics. They adhere to the five freedoms for sheep, and that's a great start when it comes to the ethical production of wool. It alleviates my animal-loving conscience. Look for Responsible Wool Standard, or ZQ Certified, being called out. That means they have to adhere to the five freedoms, and this definitely means no mulesing practices. I also like the brand Icebreaker for the same reason. The thing that gives Smart Wool a slight edge is that they carry women's sizes from extra small to 3XL. Women, and particularly plus size women, are underserved in the outdoor market, so I like supporting brands that are subverting that. The biggest downside of wool is that it's so expensive, and there really isn't a great way to make it less expensive. It's kind of slow fashion. It takes the sheep a whole year to grow its wool before it gets sheared. It's usually $80 to about $120 for merino wool base layer top or bottom, depending on the weight. You can find merino wool base layers for less than this, but I'd issue a word of caution. If a brand isn't bragging about how well they treat their animals and in very specific terms, they're probably not treating them very well. And that's a compromise I don't feel comfortable making. No matter the price tag, merino wool is typically gonna be at least three times more expensive than synthetics, but I do think they're worth it. My merino wool base layers are the first thing that I reach for when the basket of laundry comes back upstairs. They're the best dollars per degree warmth investment that I've made thus far. That being said, $200 for a single set of base layers isn't in everyone's price range, or you might object to the use of animal products. If that's the case, you'll wanna check out synthetic base layers instead. Synthetic base layers are woven from polyesters and polyester blends. Polyester is a fabric made from PET plastic and that's usually derived from petroleum. While wool production is not without its environmental footprint, it's best if you can find these using recycled polyester, as in recycled plastic bottles that have been spun into a garment. There isn't really a weight system for synthetic like there is for merino wool. Synthetic base layers can be various thicknesses from almost see-through thin to fleece-lined and thick. 
The thin ones are fantastic for layering under more formal clothes. They wick well and they dry quickly. Usually they're quite sleek, so they feel silky. My favorite synthetic base layer maker is Unique Glow's Heat Tech line. Again, this video isn't sponsored. These are very affordable for someone building out their base layer wardrobe for the first time. Heat Tech's three weights are each a little lighter than their equivalents in wool. I love that they have some different necklines, some of which scoop so I can wear things other than crew necks over them. Some of the pieces in the Heat Tech line have a milk protein that's woven in for added softness, so if you're vegan and you avoid all animal products, be sure to check the material composition before buying. As an alternative, you might want to check out Patagonia's Kaplan Midweight Base Layers, which do use recycled polyester, as well as Under Armour Cold. I have some of each of these and I can attest they're quite well made. I've also heard good things about the brands Dope Snow and Hot Chilies. Are there any brands that you've had good luck with? Help each other out. Comment below the brand and why you like them. The downside of synthetic beyond the petroleum base is that in my experience, they don't hold up as well. They tend to snag or pill. They attract hair, fur, and lint due to their sort of furry interiors. And much like workout clothing, they can develop a stink after a day or so. Because of this, you'll have to wash synthetics more often than you'd wash your wool base layers. And this brings up the issue of microplastic shedding into the waterways from your laundry. Some base layer lines will have merino wool and synthetic mixed together. Personally, I don't love that because it suffers in biodegradability compared to 100% merino wool, but it's fine. Just be aware that the price should come down accordingly. Some will have cotton contact mixed in. Avoid. Invest your money in something better. I promised in my last video to help you decode some of the terms in base layers. We kind of use some of these interchangeably, but they're not all the same thing. Base layer, second skin, thermals. A more old fashioned term is long underwear. Long johns for men, long janes for women. Another old version was the union suit. That's the red onesie with the butt flap. Double check the material composition because some of these will have cotton content. Avoid. By the way, the term long underwear is why some online retailers will put them in the underwear category. I feel like this creates confusion because people think that they might take the place of underwear. No, no, they do not. You should wear underwear under your long underwear for hygiene reasons. Another older term was thermals, which look like long underwear, but are waffled. And they're usually made of cotton or some kind of cotton blend with synthetic. Thermals will add warmth, but it will not help with sweat wicking or temperature regulation. While it might keep you warmer than nothing, the cotton will cool you down once you start to sweat. This might make an okay mid layer, but I definitely wouldn't use it as a base layer. One of the most confusing things about shopping for base layers is that they're often marketed on proprietary technologies developed by different companies and research groups and historically in partnership with the US military. Often these address the problems that synthetics face compared to wool. One issue is that synthetics develop a stink faster, so fabrics are being woven or treated with additional substances or polymers to help keep odors at bay or inhibit bacterial growth. One example is polygene. Others are silver skin or Lululemon silverescent because silver has antibacterial properties. Another shortcoming that synthetics have is that polyester fibers do not have merino wool's crimp. They're not good at trapping body heat. Enter Polar Tech Fleece. Depending on where you're shopping, you might see these referred to as polar grid or power grid. It's meant to create gridded channels that help trap heat. Another treated polyester that's meant to help trap heat is Dakin's Nano Red. So those are just a few. I couldn't possibly cover them all. Basically, if you see a compound word you don't know, it's probably a proprietary technology. There's usually more details in the specs or material composition about what it does. A good time to buy base layers is in the bumper season, so fall and spring. You can find sales from March to Memorial Day weekend in May, also on Black Friday at the end of November when outdoor stores are trying to clear their inventory. So to sum up, it doesn't matter if you choose synthetic or merino wool, but base layers of any kind are the first step to surviving and thriving in deep cold winters. The key is to wear them under your regular clothes each and every day when the temperature is below 50ish. So this was the 101 on base layers. Join me next time for a video all on insulating layers, the ones that are actually responsible for heat retention instead of heat loss prevention. Remember, there's no such thing as bad weather, there's only bad clothes.